On November 21, 1988, Trekkies eagerly tuned in for the premiere of Season 2 of Star Trek The Next Generation. Many were shocked to discover that Gates McFadden's popular character, Dr. Crusher, had been unceremoniously replaced by the unknown Dr. Pulaski, played by Diana Muldur. Interestingly enough, Muldur had also appeared in two episodes of Star Trek The Original Series years earlier, as two completely different characters. Despite her status as Trek alumni, fans immediately despised the replacement Doctor, criticizing her crotchety demeanor and her matter-of-fact bedside manner. And by Season 3, Dr. Crusher had returned, and Dr. Pulaski was tersely discarded as quickly as she'd been acquired. I submit, however, that Dr. Pulaski was actually the better character, and Dr. Crusher should have remained in Star Trek's black hole of oblivion. This is not a comment on Gates McFadden or her acting ability. She did the best she could with the material she had to work with. But when you're offered scripts like this... There's nothing wrong with me. Maybe there's something wrong with the universe. And like this... Who are you? I'm a spirit. I don't believe in... Ghosts. There's only so much you can do. To be fair, though, the writers basically admitted they shot themselves in the foot with Crusher's character in the episode Attached. I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I just couldn't resist. I'm beginning to realize that you always seem to have some acerbic remark on the tip of your tongue. Well, at least I've trained myself not to say it anymore. Well, that's really great for you, Dr. Crusher, but it doesn't make for a very interesting show for the rest of us, now does it? Dr. Pulaski arrived on the scene with no such verbal aversions, however. Her character was brought in to stir the pot a little. Rather than trying to seduce the captain... I'm a woman. I haven't had the comfort of a husband. A man. Pulaski instead engaged in intellectual discourse. To feel the thrill of victory, there has to be the possibility of failure. But where's the victory in winning a battle you can't possibly lose? We humans learn more often from, from a failure or a mistake than we do from an easy success. Deductive reasoning is one of Data's strengths. Yes, and Holmes too. But Holmes understood the human soul, the dark flecks that drive us, that, that turn the innocent into the evil. And instead of tap dancing... we get real character development. Worf, I'm honored. No one has ever performed the Klingon tea ceremony for me. You must not drink the tea. It is deadly to humans. And none too good for Klingons. It is a test of bravery, of one's ability to look at the face of mortality. Hold that thought. Antidote. If you're going to share, let's share. One of the biggest complaints people had about Pulaski was the way she treated Data. Data, look at this. Data. What? My name. It is pronounced Data. Oh? You called me Data. <laughs> What's the difference? One is my name. The other is not. Right from episode one, the main cast had no issue at all accepting Data as a person. They considered him as much a member of the crew as they were. That's a wonderfully 24th century attitude, but again, it doesn't make for overly interesting television. Dr. Pulaski, on the other hand, had a hard time accepting Data as an officer. It does know how to do these things, doesn't it? Commander Data knows precisely what he is doing. Forgive me, Mr. Data. I am not accustomed to working with non-living devices that... Forgive me again. Your service record says that you are alive. I must accept that. The main cast so quickly and easily accepted Data as a person that the opportunity for development in that area was missed. 
Dr. Pulaski's attitude paves the way for episodes like Measure of a Man and The Offspring, some of TNG's best work, and in fact makes the viewer consider why they themselves think Data is a person rather than a machine. And by the end of Season 2, Dr. Pulaski treats Data much more like a person than a machine. All right, Data. Enough of this. Doctor? How long are you going to sit sulking like Achilles in his tent? I'm conducting diagnostics. You may be able to sell Troy that story, but not me. And you're smarting because you were beaten. Well, it happens. No, Doctor. This is not about ego. I'm concerned about giving the captain unsound advice. I wish I had never maneuvered you into playing that game. Now, to be fair to Dr. Crusher, she did have some decent moments. You risk your patients' lives and justify it in the name of research. Genuine research takes time. Sometimes a lifetime of painstaking, detailed work in order to get any results. Not for you. You take shortcuts. Right through living tissue. You put your research ahead of your patients' lives. And as far as I'm concerned, that's a violation of our most sacred trust. But imagine for a minute if it was Dr. Pulaski having this debate with Dr. Russell. Or if it had been Dr. Pulaski responding to Captain Jellicoe here. Beverly, you'll need to... Have sick bay ready for the casualties you're about to send me. That's right. Dismissed. Pulaski surely would have had more to say to Jellicoe than that. She stood up to Picard. I will not have you telling me what course to set. As Chief Medical Officer, I am ordering you to report to Starbase 515 immediately. Oh, please. She even took on Worf. Looks like it's just us, handsome. I'll see you. In the end, Mulder left the show for a number of reasons. She was unhappy, the fans were complaining, and Gates McFadden had agreed to return. And she didn't seem very happy about another woman being in her sickbay either. I am familiar with Dr. Pulaski's technique. Still, it would have been interesting to see how the Pulaski character would have played out in the remainder of the series. Too bad she didn't get picked up by any of the other Trek series either. She could have been an interesting addition to DS9, or even Voyager somehow. Either way, I really don't think Pulaski deserves the fan hate she tends to receive. So the next time you're watching TNG Season 2, give Pulaski a chance. I miss Dr. Pulaski. Where's Dr. Pulaski? I miss her wry wit.